Joining us now, one of three, excuse me, four key seniors on this BYU women's basketball team, Mackenzie Pulsifer, part of a power couple within BYU sports and a three-time 5A player of the year from Alta High School. Mackenzie, welcome back to Studio B. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, you're, are you aware of the, this whole power couple discussion, uh, meaning that <laughs> – the man and the woman in the relationship are both BYU. You know what athletes. a power couple is. <laughs> I've heard of it, but I did not know. I was a part. I was not aware. Well, you, you the, you've got to be Wyatt in the discussion Wars, now, right? The Wyatt Awards last year we discussed this. Do you remember? Um, you a little bit, yeah, 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 a little bit. Adam Pulsifer, linebacker for BYU football, and Mackenzie Pulsifer, the sharpshooter for women's basketball. <laughs> pretty good. That is pretty good, right? Pretty good. We'll figure out the power rankings for the power okay. couples okay. Later. a little bit later yeah. on. Okay. Not today. More importantly, you bounce back after a tough loss to open conference play, and you do so in convincing fashion, beating LMU by 17, and you had one of your better games of the season. What did you notice that was different about the win compared to that disappointing season opening or conference opening loss? Uh, this game was just different in general because we needed to win. We had to kind of have a chip on our shoulder from our last loss, losing to Santa Clara by one. Um, I think more than anything, we had something to prove as a team, come together and prove that. But we played as a team a lot better that game, moved the ball. And if you could kind of pull clips from that, that game, that there is multiple examples of what Juddy's motion offense is about. And so that was just a big success there. And, um, and I think just everyone just did their job. Everyone did their part. And collectively it was – came out with a really good result. So I think it was just good team basketball um, that led us to that victory. Now you have a big game with St. Mary's coming up tomorrow night. And this is kind of a rivalry. Um, mm -hmm. It's always a big game in conference. So what does this game mean for your team in game three of the league? This game, this game will be huge just because, like you said, Gonzaga losing their first two. Uh, it's kind of wide open right now. So um, just taking this and running with it would be – the best thing that we could do. Um, and St. Mary's is is definitely one of those teams up there just because of their physicalness. Um, that's something that, you know, is just really focused on when we play this team is how physical they are. And and uh, we have to come out ready to play because, you know, if they're more physical, they're going to win. That's just kind of how I think any game is, is, you know, whoever's more physical and wants that. So, um yeah, this game this game's important for us. It's just a good momentum game. It's a good victory that we need to add to the schedule. So Our Twitter question focusing on the BYU St. Mary's matchup on the men's side. So let's throw in the curveball here and ask you today's Twitter question. But for the women, which BYU player will have the greatest impact on the outcome of the game against St. Mary's at the Marriott Center on Thursday night? I think I mean that's a tough, tough toss up there. Um between Kalani and Cassie, but I think Cassie will be a huge impact player for us only because she's an aggressive, you know, attacker. And I think that her mentality um, sets a great tone for our team. It sets a great tone for the other team. Um, so I think her doing what she's been doing this whole season and uh, having the team follow in her footsteps, I think that, that that's the impact that we need and that I'm hoping that we'll have from her. Um, and obviously Kalani is just always an impact player, but, uh, yeah, that's what I would say for this game. We need, we need her mentality to run through everybody's veins that mm. game. You left off the second leading score on the team there. <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and top perimeter defender. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll join in there then. Okay. <laughs> I noticed that, uh, you, Cassie Broadhead and Kalani Purcell, have shot within 16 shots of each other on the entire season. Um, so y you all are have some kind of balance from the field. Is yeah. that uh, by design or that just happens? That just happens. I don't know. I, it's, I don't know why or how. Um, and the funny thing is, is that it's never, you know, it never matters. It just kind of, it just happens. And I think, I think that's what makes this team fun. And, um, kind of has had some up and downs kind of finding a way to mold and mesh and you know games that we've lost we haven't had that kind of trio thing going on um but when we do I think that's when we're at our best and so 
Um, it doesn't really happen by design, but it needs to happen. <laughs> if we could design it that way, that would be really great. But I just think that comes with each of us doing our part, um, being effective, and it kind of just happens on its own. So, How is life different as one of the four seniors on the team? Uh, <laughs> there's a little more pressure just because expectation levels are higher. Uh, I've had numerous talks with Juddy and it's, you know, my roles changed from in the past I was playing with Lexi and it was if I got my shot, if I got my points, it was kind of a pat on the back, extra bonus, you know. Um, but now it's looked at as, you know, you need to do this, you need to do that, and you can't afford to not. And as a senior, there's certain things that they expect us to do and not make mistakes on that maybe a freshman might uh so those expectations, you just have to be aware of them and know what they want from you because if you don't do what they want, then you can have some unhappy coaches. <laughs> <gasps> Mackenzie, <laughs> you got to play, you senior. Uh, what, what's your favorite Juddyism this season? Okay, this is already on my head. Um, He's having a problem saying names. We already know that's we already know that's a problem, but it's really bad because he cannot say Cassie. It's Kathy, <laughs> Kathy, and he'll be in a serious conversation in the middle of practice and say, "Kathy, you need to do this." And Everyone's we just like, we, no Kathy? one can just keep a straight face. And then finally, he'll he kind of loosens up and he's like, "Oh, okay, oh, Cassie, Cassie," and just kind of. <laughs> but it's happened probably six, seven times. Happens at least once a day. Wow. Kathy. <laughs> so. Kathy Broadhead. That's awesome. I didn't know if she knew she was changing the name this year. <laughs> yeah. Cassie and Kathy are both really good. They are. <laughs> That's funny. Well, anyway, I want to know what your name is. Like when he messes up your name, what does he, what does he mess up your name? He, uh, he usually says McKenz or he'll try to say Pulsifer. That's really hard for him, so he just sticks with Morrison. But yeah, so <laughs> I, I mean, I think a lot of people he has a hard time changing their name because and he's used married. to them. Yeah. But I really just don't think he can say Pulsifer very well. <laughs> like, oh, oh, oh. So it just oh, it's Morrison. Oh, oh. <laughs> we love Judd. He's the yeah. grandpa from the Oh, Simpsons. he's funny. He's he's one of our favorite people and a big part of BYU Sports Nation. Kathy. Right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, whether it's Kathy or Morrison, the point is we need, we need to give BYU Sports Nation karma to BYU Women's Basketball, and we're giving it specifically to you. Thank Mackenzie you. Morrison yeah. Pulsifer. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks for the time, Mackenzie. Always great to talk to you, and good luck against St. Mary's. Thank you.